and welcome to the Dart Show. Now spring is finally here and we're filming today's show on the banks of the River Thames. Now this is the place to get all the up-to-date news and reviews from the world of darts. Now we've got loads to bring you on today's show. Here's what's on the way. We're in Germany for the first European Tour event of the year. I think the European Tours, they are my favourite tournaments to be honest. Uh, the crowd is always amazing. After winning his first TV title, we catch up with Peter Wright at home in Suffolk. I borrowed this off of Michael. Uh, I won't be giving it back next year, mate. We speak to Gerwin Price as he prepares for the Dubai Darts Masters. I just want to get into the top 16 of the world. It's just my short-term goal, to be honest with you. And former postman Joe Cullen delivers his first senior ranking title. Put a massive effort in and it. it's all paying off like, as we speak, so hopefully it continues. Now, as ever, I'm joined by the dream team, darts reporter Dan Dawson and former players champion Paul Nicholson. Now, welcome to the show, guys. Now, since the last show, loads has happened, but let's start off by talking now about Adrian Lewis's nine darter in Liverpool, Paul. Yeah, in front of a massive crowd in Liverpool, he provided the biggest moment of the Premier League so far. But that one single moment, I think, was needed just to usher in the second phase of the Premier League, and now it's all kicking off to see who's going to get to the auto and we have no idea who's going to make it. And there's been a few twists and turns in the Premier League as well, Dan. Uh, yeah, I mean, this second phase, as Paul calls it, it is very much up for grabs. Michael Van Gerwen setting the record for the number of televised victories in a row, 44, but then couldn't extend it any further, beaten by Raymond Van Barneveld on the same night, and then Barney beaten by Adrian Lewis in his perfect leg uh, just the other night. So, look, if anybody can put a run together, then a place at the O2 is very much up for grabs. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, we've also seen the start of the European Tour. Now, Dan was out in the beautiful town of Hildesheim to report on all the action from the first event of the year. So what is the European Tour? Well, it's 12 events over the course of the year, 48 players competing in each, each over a three-day weekend. £25,000 top prize in front of huge crowds, dwarfing those of some of the major tournaments. And it all starts here in Hildesheim with the German Darts Championship. The crowd's absolutely incredible. I've never witnessed a crowd like it. I think the European tours, they are my favourite tournaments, to be honest. Uh, the crowd is always amazing, the venues are good. The fans always, are always heard, um, always quite boisterous, and uh, it's lovely to play in these events, to be honest. Well, at the end of day one, the crowds have gone home, and the big story they were treated to was Diogo Portela, the first Brazilian on the European tour, and a winner as well. He saw off Martin Schindler of Germany. Game shot. And history and is made. Diogo Portela. At the German Darts Championship. It's just awesome. It's really, really good. It's like your dream has become true. Just want to be back as soon as possible there. <laughs> Day two saw world number five James Wade absolutely cruising through his second round match. 5 1 up to Dynamite Darren Johnson, but he lost it 6 5. Yeah, it's the first time I've beat James Wade, and I need to stop giving him a start. The afternoon session whittled it down to the last eight. Six different nationalities represented. Three of them are Dutch, though, and one of them is the world number one, Michael Van Gerwen. However, he's got to take on the standout performer from the last 16, Ian White, who averaged nearly 105. Those two are about to square off in the opening quarterfinal. We're going to find out who makes it through to the semi. The world number one comfortably saw off Ian White 6-3 in the first quarter and would face fellow countryman Jella Klaassen after he beat Benito van der Pass 6-4. Peter Wright cruised past Kim Hybrex 6-2. And Welshman Gerwin Price matched that scoreline in beating Mentor Sulevich. In the semi-finals, Van Gerwen thrashed Jelle Klaassen as he wasted no time in reaching the first European Tour final of the year, recording a 6-1 victory. Wright was pushed all the way by Gerwin Price in a repeat of the UK Open final, only for the Welshman to miss tops for victory in the deciding leg, as Wright secured his place in the decider. It's MVG versus Peter Wright on this stage in just moments. The countdown is off.
Van Gerwen made a confident start as he took the opening leg and then doubled his lead with an 11 darter to break throw. Right hit back to level before tops move Van Gerwen 3-2 up. Snakebite was not ready to give up the fight. He took a 5-3 lead before he held his nerve with a 60 checkout to complete the comeback. I'm really, really, really pleased, uh, you know, over the moon. It's great at the moment because I'm red hot and I'm losing weight at the time. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> well, Peter Wright is signing autographs and celebrating with his fans after beating Michael Van Gogh in the final, his second European Tour title. Only five men before Peter Wright had managed to achieve that feat. It's five titles in total in this calendar year already. Michael Van Gogh has dominated the European Tour at the start of each year for the last couple of years. Can Peter Wright go and do the same? Well, we'll find out in a couple of weeks' time when they go to Jena for the German Darts Masters. So a man in green won in Hildesheim, but the man in green won in Jena, Dan. Yeah, he did. Normal service resumed for Michael Van Gogh and winning the second Euro Tour event and just complete dominance over the course of the weekend. Started off averaging 110, 10 points clear in the averages at the end of the tournament from anybody else, and he beat Jella Klaassen in the final. Um, it's just normal stuff for MVG nowadays. And we've seen the two in my opinion, the two best players in the world right now win the first two European events. So it'll be interesting to see if that trend continues going into further European events and other events in the next few months. But those two guys are really laying down a marker, especially when they're both wearing green in the finals. <laughs> must be something about that colour, it must be. Well, after the two European Tour events, let's take a look at the world rankings. And no change at the top, of course, for Michael Van Gogh, followed by Gary Anderson and Peter Wright. But it's starting to look a bit interesting in that fourth spot, Dan. Yes, yeah, certainly James Wade putting some pressure on Adrian Lewis. I think, for me, the, the really interesting battle is that one for the top 16 though you've got some informed players just lurking outside and you've got people just inside there who are playing pretty well but at the same time those three guys outside I think are really ready to strike especially Gerwin price wise severely rate I think this is really juicy for the next few months it is well that win for Peter Wright at the European Tour Championship in Hildesheim certainly given him a good chance moving up the rankings with Gary Anderson spot in second place looking quite interesting we caught up with him after the event the Suffolk countryside, quintessentially English, a peaceful, tranquil setting, and certainly not a place you would imagine one of the most colourful darts players to live. Mendham is the home of the infamous Peter Snakebite Wright. You're in my man cave. The snake bites pit. It's my practice area and dark room. The masks. I suppose it's like the all the bad people in the in the crowd's audiences don't want you to win. Now, so, so I got some of them. Thirteen years old then when I started. I just asked my parents, give me some pocket money, and I went out and got a set of darts, big brass ones. Couldn't afford a dartboard and I think so. Uh, I used to practice on the uh, on trees. These are the ones I won the UK Open with, these ones. But I don't like practicing with them. I just use them for the matches. So I practice with a, a different set. So, so it makes me concentrate, otherwise you get lazy. My job beforehand was a tire fitter. Obviously, 10 years ago, when I gave up the job and started uh, as a professional dart player, uh, it's very hard and thinking if I could just be a top 16 player I'd, I'd be happy for that but you know, I've got further I'm up to number three and I haven't even started yet. Our back garden is where we got the we've got our chickens we've got 15 15 chickens this is a nosy one every time we open the the car to put the cases in she's always sitting in the in the car wanting to go with you and, you know I'm a very shy guy but the the snake bite I become with the character, with the hair done and the outfit. You know, I'd, I'd become, I'd become Peter Snake Bite right. So just Peter Wright, the shy guy. We've got a nice shiny uh, UK Open. I borrowed this off of Michael. Uh, I won't be giving it back next year, mate. I'm lucky. I'll be keeping it. <laughs> it was a relief to get my first major. This would raise the roof, and he's done it. What a way to win the title, his first televised title. I said I wasn't going to cry, but I did, <laughs> like a big baby. But 
that was, that was only down to all the hard work uh, Joe puts in, our family and all the kids, what they do for us. Obviously Michael wasn't there. The stats for the UK Open was uh, showed that could have beat uh, yeah, Michael or Phil or you know anybody, to be honest. I've beaten him since in a final, so it doesn't really matter if he was there or not. Yes, I've got my cabinet ready for the World Championships trophy. And here we go, nice big cabinet. Everything I enter, I want to win now, and I can believe I can win. As before, uh, I don't know, there was a, a slight doubt. Is Michael really that good? Yeah, he is good, but uh, so am I. But that's ready for the world. Peter Wright, a man on a mission, should we say. Peter has never really changed in all the time that I've known him. I've known him since the first day I turned professional back in 2008, and he's just an incredibly driven individual. And the little jokes he makes, like when he says he borrowed the trophy from Van Gogh. And he's not a bit he's, back. He <laughs> says things like that all the time. We're just starting to get to know him a lot more now, and he's just a great asset to the, uh, the game of darts. And that cabinet, Dan? Well, he's got it there ready for the world. So I believe he has the game to be able to go and do it. I think he can win more major titles. Huge respect for Peter Wright and just, well, he's, he's created this persona that he plays under. You know, he's even wearing an Iron Man shirt in that video. He is, it's like a superhero character that he's created and it's one that brings his best darts out of him rather than just say a persona that gets you fined regularly. Watch out for the Marvel comic, Snakebite. That will be something to read or watch in a movie. <laughs> well, watch out for that then. Well, make sure you join us after the break where Paul is back on the board for our monthly dart school. We hear from Gowin Price about his hopes and ambitions for the future. And we also speak to rising star Joe Cullen. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a few minutes. Hello and welcome back to The Dart Show. Now we're filming the programme this month in London on the banks of the River Thames. Now let's head over to the board where Paul is here with our monthly dart school. Lesson number four, this is the release. So we're actually gonna throw darts now. The easiest way to explain the release is this. What I wanted to do is get your stance and I want you to point at the dartboard with a little bit of force. So just like this, okay? That's mimicking a dart action. So if we now put a dart in our hands with the grip that we talked about in lesson one, just do that exact same thing. Just point like that. If you're going to copy anybody in the world of darts, I'd say Raymond van Barneveld is the man. The reason we go with RVB is because he has the smoothest action in the world. If you look at his action over the course of his career, he's done something that a lot of players haven't, which is just keep it nice and smooth, and there's no hyperextension of his elbow or his wrist. And because he's a tall man, he doesn't have to throw it very hard. Now, what I want you to go away and do now is practice having a smooth throw, because the more you practice it, the more natural it'll become. Thanks for those top tips there, Paul. I'm sure that's going to help you guys out at home. Now, with the World Series fast approaching, the first leg is kicking off in May in Dubai. Now, Gerwin Price is going to be making his debut. So we thought we'd head over to Wales and find out a little bit more about him. In the historic and dramatic Welsh Valleys, one man trying for a future in darts is former rugby player Gerwin Price. He's already been a force this year by making it to the UK Open final and the Iceman has started to break the line. This is where I've grown up since forever. Yeah, we just passed my sister there. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm my brother. This is the rugby field we're passing where we play all our home games, so I scored a few tries on there. Oh, I've always played rugby since I was about five, six years of age when Markham started a mini rugby and along the way a couple of our mates started a Friday night league in the pub we're in the moment at Markham Miners Welfare and I took the darts for, for a little bit and here I am. Every time I'm out if I get someone asking me for an autograph or a picture and I'll have the mic taken out of me. I've probably been playing in total now maybe five, six years but obviously on the PDC this, this is my fourth year coming up. I can remember my first European tour when I played against Gary Anderson on the main stage. I was shaking like a leaf. But I've, I've learned from that and I've got more experience. I've played in a lot more um, 
big stage events, so I'm getting used to it now. Gerwin Price goes through to his first ever major TV final. Now I expect more of myself and things that seem to be going a little bit better, whereas I was going in tournaments and didn't really matter if I'd lost, but now, now it means a lot more to me. I seem to be concentrating a lot more and doing a little bit better. Just at the local comprehensive school where our team trains. This is my 10 year old, my lucky charm as well. You know, we went to, she came to Blackpool with me the first year when I beat Adrian Lewis and got through to the quarters. Up until now, I've, I've played most of the games. You know, whenever I'm off, off darts, I'll play rugby, but I think it's time to pack it in. Now it's getting a little bit risky. Very confident, very skillful, uh, very powerful. You see him on, on the TV with darts, him being uh, with his bulging muscles and uh, he brings that to the fore when he plays rugby as well. For us, I think it's, it's the same. He's just w one of the boys from the village. We don't, don't really see him as a, as a professional darts, as a celebrity. I just want to get into the top 16 of the world. It's just my short-term goal, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm number 17 now, so I'm not too far off. But Hopefully, I don't want to be number 16 for the TV events. I'll be drawing Michael's second round, but I'm happy where I am at the moment. I'm number one in Wales, so I think I can take the cheers for that. But towards the World Championships, hopefully I'm in, inside the top 16. Now, it's pretty impressive. It's only his fourth year on the tour, and he's talking about breaking into the top 16, which is realistic. Yeah, massively impressive from Gerwin Price. And it's not just the quality of darts he's throwing. I like his attitude. He's ruffled a few feathers. He's had a few fallouts on social media and in person with some of the top names in the game. He does not care. He doesn't take a backward step, and it's serving him very, very well. I mean, you know how well he can play. How many times have you beaten him? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember playing Gerwin the first time, thinking, who's this guy? And afterwards, I knew. I thought, at the time, I wasn't that impressed with him. I thought, he's a bit ruffled and he's trying to basically do what I used to do. But now, I've warmed to him majorly. I think his brand of darts is something that can go on for a long time. And very much like Peter Wright, he's very quiet in the background. He loves to live where he lives in a quiet uh, South Wales village. And when he's on that stage, he turns into a monster. And that's exactly what darts need. Someone who looks like him and someone who performs like him as well. And how do you think he'll perform in Dubai then? I think he'll do really well, because like we said in many other times talking about Gerwin Price, he doesn't care for reputation, but most importantly, he's going to have to find out how his darts fly over there, because the air is different, and he is going to be outside, so he may need heavier darts done. He may do, but he's not going to have a problem chucking him, is he? I mean, look at the size of the man. <laughs> We've not got a dart player who looks like Gerwin. I, I'm, I think that he's met every challenge admirably so far. I don't see why this would be any different. Well, on to another rising star now. They're coming in thick and fast on today's show is Joe Cullen. Now, he won his first PDC Pro Tour title in Players' Championship 8 in Barnsley. He beat Daryl Gurney 6-5 in the final. Now, we caught up with him at the European Tour event in Hildesheim. Joe Cullen, a former postman, first came to prominence in 2008 when he qualified for the UK Open. He turned pro in 2009, but until last year, he'd failed to deliver at the top level. 2016 was a massive breakthrough year for me. I, um, it was great to get to the top 32. I just, um, I think it was down to myself. I was just lazy, to be honest. I was just expecting the results to come by not putting the effort in. But at the beginning of 2016, I put a massive effort in, and it, it's all paying off like as we speak, so hopefully it continues. To so quarter final in the UK Open was big for me. It was a quarter final on TV. So I proved to myself that I can cut it with the best of them, and um, yeah, it's a big confidence booster going to the rest of the year. Playing the European so it's, it's a massive benefit. I think that's why you look now and so many young players coming through like 18, 19, 20 there, there's no fear in the game because the European tour, there's two, three thousand everywhere we go and it's packed out. So if you look at that, there's not much difference whatsoever. The cameras are still there, it's just not obviously on mainstream TV. My confidence levels are they're high, obviously, but I'm not at the best start to the season. I, um, but I suppose that's down to the standards I set myself after last year. You know, I'm happy enough with my form, but I'm just not killing games off when I really should do, but um, I'm sure that'll come. And he certainly did just that, because typically the week after speaking to Joe, he won his first Players' Championship title, didn't he, Dan? Uh, yeah, he did on the Sunday in Barnsley. Darrell Gurney won on the Saturday his first title. That meant Joe Cullen was the highest-ranked PDC player without a title, and that only lasted about 18 hours. He was superb right the way through the day. We've talked about Joe's potential for years, but he's finally delivering on it now. Joe's talent has always been there. His confidence and swagger are something that fellow professionals genuinely like. He's a great person to be around and I like how he admitted that he was lazy because when you look in the mirror and you admit that to yourself, you can do something about it. And 
Joe has done something about it over the course of the last 15 months. He's got a new management group. He's obviously happier in life with it. And his talent now is shining through even more because of the harder work he's putting in. Mm -hmm. Titles don't lie. When you start winning, you genuinely go on and win even more. Well, let's take a look at the Players' Championship rankings then. Because, I mean, the Players' Championships are like a breeding ground, aren't they, for up-and-coming players? Yeah, it's yeah, bread and butter of professional darts. Uh, 22 tournaments over the year in leisure centres, away from the TV cameras, but still 10 grand to the winner. And the guys who go on and, and win on there, it's often a precursor to having big runs at major tournaments. And, and Daryl Gurney and Joe Cullen, you would expect, will have more success now they've got those wins. I think they will, because they're the kind of age that they can kick on from something like this and if they can win on the pro tour like they do with players championships no reason why they can't go on and win european tour events and then potentially go on to win big tv events now fair play to the pdc for picking daryl gurney for las vegas because <laughs> yeah. he's obviously a, a form horse well we have another action-packed month ahead let's have a look at what's coming up the european tour continues in may with a third event in germany before the annual visit to gibraltar the Premier League comes to an end with the playoffs at the O2. And the World Series of Darts kicks off in Dubai as Gary Anderson returns to defend his title. Well, another busy month ahead. What are you most looking forward to, Paul? Uh, Dubai for me. It's a little bit of a different event and uh, there's nothing better than watching some of the top flight dart players playing outside, sunburned. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just brilliant and I think with the unknown factor of little breezes and playing outside at night, uh, I just think it brings something different to the sport and I'm, I'm really interested to see whether Gary Anderson can continue what he did last year or whether Van Gerwen's going to get his big little teardrop trophy back. And what about you, Dan? Uh, Premier League for me, uh, I think that even though Judgment Night was a little bit disappointing because everything had already been judged, uh, it meant that the run for the playoffs in these last few weeks very tight, very difficult to predict who's going to grab those top four spots. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all from us for this month's Dart Show. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.